بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستقف الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته برودس so inshallah we'll continue from where we left off as you can see uh, the Sheikh Hafizullah Sheikh Sagal Fawzan was explaining the uh, the meaning of Iman and he was going through as where we stopped he was going through the meaning of the six pillars of Iman and explaining each one so we reached this paragraph here as you can see where my cursor is so inshallah we will read from there so the Sheikh, he says, قوله وأركانه ستة أي دعائمه التي يقوم عليها ويفقد بفقدها أو يفقد واحد منها ستة أركان وهي. So he says in this paragraph, he says that on his speech quote in the original author, the Sheikh Al Islam Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahab, رحمه الله. He quotes him in, from the original book that we're going through the three fundamental principles and he says, and his speech, uh, and they are six. Yeah, so meaning that the pillars of Iman are six as we know. And he says, i.e. Um, the um, the foundations or, or, or what uh, or the pillars. Just he, gives, he uses another word for pillars. The Sheikh uses another word for pillars and he says that they are pillars, uh, that something, you know, is built upon. So he says that if one of them is lost, if one of the pillars falls, then all of them are no longer valid. Meaning that if you if you uh, uh, don't believe in one of the six pillars of Iman, it nullifies all of your Iman. Your, the asal of your Iman, the, the, the very root or foundation of your Iman, it no longer exists. So meaning that you've got to believe in all of all of the six pillars, you have to have faith in them. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, Al Awalu. So he's gonna go through each of the pillars, inshallah, and explain them. And give us some examples as well, inshallah. So the Shaykh he says, Al Awalu Antu Mina Billah Faruknu Al Awalu Wahuwal Imanu Billahi Wa Yashmalu Anwa at Tawheed Thalatha Al Imanu بأن الله سبحانه وتعالى واحد أحد فرد صمد لا شريك له في ربوبيته ولا في ألوهيته ولا في أسمائه وصفاته. So the Sheikh says the first pillar is that you believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى and this is the first pillar and it is having faith or believing in Allah. And the Sheikh says it consists and it comprises all of the three types of Tawheed. So he says that Iman, uh, Al-Iman is that, or faith is that you, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah? So uh, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one, yeah? He's the only one. He's a self-sufficient master. That is, he has no partner. He has no partner at all in his lordship, nor in his in his worship and no in his names and attributes there is nothing like him yeah as uh, the sheikh explained previously earlier on in the book about the three types of tawhid and its meanings so then the sheikh continues and he says athani and i, I think we'll uh, cover at least half of the lesson today on the second pillar because it's quite long inshallah so the sheikh says athani and the and secondly he says al imanu bil malaika so the second pillar having belief in the angels, that the angels exist, even though we don't see them, that we believe that they exist, the angels. 
and the Sheikh he says wal malaikatu jam'u jam'u malak wa asluhu malak thumma sahala waqil malak wal malaikatu khal khalaq aw khalq min khalqillah fi alim al ghaib khalaqahum Allah li ibadatihi wa li tanfidhi iwamirihi awamirihi subhanahu wa ta'ala fi mulkihi wa hum asnaf kullu sinf lahu amalun muwakkalun bihi wa yaqumu bihi la ya'suna Allah ma amarahum wa yaf'aluna ma yu'marun فمنهم من هو موكل بالوحي وهو جبريل عليه الصلاة عليه السلام وهو أشرف الملائكة وهو الروح الأمين شديد شديد القوة. so then the sheikh he says that the angels so the word al malaika is the plural of the singular which is malak so malak is one angel al malaika many angels plural okay and then he says that the the root of the actual word malak is actually malaat but it was made easy to say so it's malak so it gives us that benefit from a linguistic point of view then the sheikh he says and the angels they are from the creation they are from the creation of the creation of allah uh, in the world of the unseen yeah so we don't see them but they are there and then the sheikh says that allah created them to worship him and to execute his commands subhanahu wa ta'ala in in his uh mulk or like for example in the universe uh, everything that allah owns subhanahu wa ta'ala and um the sheikh mentions here that there are different types there are types the angels are of types and he says and the sheikh says they are given they are of different types and they have different jobs so they char allah has charged them with different tasks to do and they carry out and execute those tasks what allah has commanded them with and they don't disobey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather they carry out what allah has commanded them with and they do their jobs as they've been commanded by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do so from them are those who uh, who have been charged with uh, a revelation and as we all know that jibril alayhi salam is the angel that, that has been given this uh, great job uh, to reveal the revelation to the prophets and messengers yeah and the sheikh says and he is the most noble and lofty of the angels and he is also known as a ruhul amin the trustworthy one and also shadidul quwa meaning very strong and powerful allah made him very extremely strong and powerful so then the sheikh goes on to say wa minhum man huwa muwakkalun bi haml al arsh alladhina yahmilun al arsh wa man hawla qala ta'ala wal malaku ala arja'iha wa yahmilu arsh rabbika فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٌ سورة الحاقة So the first verse is from سورة غافر verse 7 Then the second verse that we quoted is from سورة الحاقة verse 17 And so if we go to the meaning meanings of those then let's have a look We can go to سورة الغافر سورة الغافر Let's read the whole those angels who bear the throne of Allah and those around it glorify the praise of their Lord and believe in Him and ask forgiveness for those who believe in the oneness of Allah, saying, O oh Lord, we comprehend all things in mercy and knowledge, so forgive those who repent and follow your way and save them from the torment of the blazing fire. That's the whole ayah. And then the second one is from Surah al haqqa So let's go there. Surah al haqqa verse 17. And the angels will be on its sides and eight angels will that day bear the throne of your Lord above them. So let's carry on then, inshallah. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, Al-Arshu Al-Arshu huwa a'zam al-mukhluqati wa la ya'lamu idhamahu illallah azza wa jal يحمله الملائكة 
وهذا دليل على عظم الملائكة وعظم قواهم و وخلقهم قال تعالى الحمد لله فاطر السماوات والأرض جائل الملائكة رسلا أولي أجنحة مثنى وثلاثة ورباع يزيد في الخلق ما يشاء So then the Sheikh, he says that the Arsh, it is, it is the greatest of the creation. So all of us, all of the things that are created, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the greatest and the most magnificent of those creations. And nobody knows its magnificence and its greatness except Allah Azza wa Jal. In truth, only Allah knows its It's that greatness of the throne and its magnificence. And the Sheikh, he says here that the angels carry it, that there are angels that carry the throne or hold up the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Sheikh says that this is evidence of the greatness and magnificence likewise of the angels themselves and the magnificence and the greatness of their, their power, the strength and power that they have <coughs> and how Allah has created them. So then the Shaykh quotes the ayah that we just read in Arabic and that is from Surah Al-Fatir. So if we go to Surah Al-Fatir and read the meaning of the ayah in English, then it says here, All the praises and thanks be to Allah, the only originator or the only creator of the heavens and the earth, who made the angels messengers with wings, two or three or four, He increases in creation what he wills. Verily, Allah is able to do all things. So that supports what the Shaykh is saying. And then we continue. And the Shaykh, he says, فَمِنْ هُمْ مَنْ لَهُ سِتُّ مِئَةِ جَنَاحٍ كَجِبْرِيلٍ عليه الصلاة والسلام فَلَا يَعْلَمُ إِذْمْ خِلْقَتِهِمْ إِلَّا اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَلَى بَلْ عِبَادٌ مُكْرَمُونَ لا يسبقونه بالقول وهم بأمره يعملون ومنهم الموكل بالقطر والنبات وهو ميكائيل ومنهم من هو موكل بالنفخ في السور وهو إسرافيل ينفخ في السور فيهلك كل شيء فيهلك كل شيء قال تعالى ونفخ في السور فسائق من في السماوات ومن في الأرض إلا من شاء الله ثم نفخ فيه ونفخ فيه مرة ثانية فتطير الأرواح في أجسادها ثم نفخ فيه أخرى فإذا هم قيام ينظرون. So then the sheikh he says in this paragraph that and from the angels and from them are those who uh, who have six hundred wings like Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam he has six hundred wings so only Allah truly knows the magnificence of these angels right and then the shaykh quotes an ayah from surah al-anbiya and we will get the meaning for that surah al-anbiya verse 26 and 27 we will read And they say the most beneficent Allah has begotten a son or children. Glory to him. They are those whom they call children or Allah, i.e. the angels, Isa, Jesus, son of Maryam, Uzair, are but honored slaves. Okay, that's a different ayah that I've read. Let's go to the one we should be reading. One second, have I got the right one? Give me one second, brothers. Yeah. I think I've got the wrong one here. One second, they speak not until he has spoken and they act. Okay, there's, there's a misquotation over here. But anyway, the ayah here, meaning uh, that they are noble. Uh, they are noble. They are noble slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? Uh, and, uh, and that they're basically noble, um, noble, noble slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and And they don't they don't do anything of their own will, meaning here that they don't do anything of their own will and they carry out 
what they've been commanded with, basically. Yeah. So then the Sheikh said here that, and from them are those who are charged with um, the rain and vegetation, for example, Mikail, and there are those who have been charged with the task of blowing in the trumpet, for example, Israfil, when he when he'll blow in the trumpet, um, then every all the soul, everybody will die, right? Everything will be destroyed. And then the Sheikh brings an, another ayah with regards to that. So let's go there. Then the Sheikh, he mentions Surah Al-Zumar, I believe here, yeah, Surah Al-Zumar. Yeah, Surah Al-Zumar. And the trumpet will be blown. And all who are in the heavens and all who are on the earth will swoon away, except him whom Allah wills. Then it will be blown a second time. And behold, they will be standing, looking and waiting. So the first time, everything will be destroyed. And on the second blowing of the trumpet, everybody will be resurrected and they will be waiting. <clears throat> so this is what the Sheikh just mentions here in this short paragraph, the two lines here, which we've mentioned in the ayah. Uh, so let's carry on. وَمِنْ هُمْ مَنْ هُوَ مُوَكَّلْ بِقَبْضِ الْأَرْوَاحِ إِدَّا نِهَايَةِ أَجَالِهَا وَهُوَ مَلَكِ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ تَعَالَى قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِّلَ بِكُمْ ثُمَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ تُرْجَعُونَ وَمَعْهُ أَعْوَانٍ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ تُوَفَّتْهُ رُسُلُنَا وَهُمْ لَا يُفَرِّطُونَ يَعْنِي أَعْوَانٍ مَلَكَ الْمَوْتِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ هُوَ مُوَكِّلٌ بِالْأَجْنِ بِالْأَجْنِ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ سُدَانٌ the Sheikh says, and from the angels are those who have been charged with the task of taking the souls, you know, uh, at, at the point of death. So when the um, when a person, for example, simple example, when one of us passes away and our time has come to leave this earth, then the angel of uh, death comes and takes our souls, takes our soul away from our body. Yep. And then the Shaykh quotes an ayah from Surah to Sajda. So let's go there. Uh, Surah to Sajda. And let's read the ayah. Say the angel of death who is set over you will take your souls, then you shall be brought to your Lord. And then we have another ayah from Surah to Al-An'am. And let's go there. Surah to Al-An'am. It's the starting of the ayah. He is the irresistible supreme over his slaves and, the, and he sends guardians, angels guarding and writing all of one's good and bad deeds over you. Yeah? Let's read the whole ayah over you. Until when death approaches one of you, our messengers and angels, uh, angel of death and his assistants take his soul and they never neglect their duty. So that's the last part that we should focus on. Until when death approaches one of you, our messengers, i.e. angel of death and his assistants, Take his soul and they never neglect their duty. Uh, and then the Sheikh just explains that here, saying to us that the angel of death and, 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 and obviously his assistants, meaning the angel of death, uh, and also mentions uh, about the angels who have been tasked uh, with regards to uh, blowing the, you know, in terms of uh, uh, carrying the soul uh, to the fetuses as well. Yeah. <clears throat> So then we carry on. I'm going to the next paragraph. Then the Shaykh he mentions, he says, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ يَجْمَعُ خَلْقَهُ فِي بَتْنِ أُمِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا نُطْفَ ثُمَّ يَكُونُ عَلَقَةً مِثْلُ ذَلِكَ ثُمَّ يَكُونُ مُضْغَةً مِثْلُ ذَلِكَ ثُمَّ يُرْسِلْ إِلَيْهِ الْمَلَكِ الحديث. So this is the hadith that we've all heard of. That we all would have come across regarding what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about the stages of, uh, you know, uh, conception. So, like um, when a woman becomes pregnant, uh, you know, the fetus before that it's a small piece of like flesh, then it's clothed with meat and becomes a cloth, etc. Like this in those stages. Then the Sheikh says, <clears throat> and then sorry, then at the end of the hadith here. He mentions مثل ذلك ثم يرسل إليه الملك and the ending of the hadith is regarding that when it gets to a certain point 
usually, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's around the four-month mark. I can't remember exactly around the four-month mark. Um, come on the microphone if I've said it wrong and uh, correct me. Uh, but around about the four-month mark, then uh, Allah sends an angel uh, with, the, with the, its soul and the soul is blown into this uh, fetus. So it's given life. Then the Sheikh says, وَمِنْهُمُ الْمُوَكَّلُونَ بِهِفْدِ عَمَالِ بَنِي آدَمْ قَالَ تَعَالَى وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكُمْ لَحَافِظِينَ كِرَامًا كَاتِبِينَ يُلَازِمُونَكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ So I'll stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh says also that there are angels that are tasked with the job or the task of um, recording our actions. So whatever actions we do, good or bad, they are being recorded. And then the ayah that we just read is evidence of that. And so if we go to Surah Al-Infitar, we will see for ourselves here, inshallah, verse 10 and 11. But verily over you are appointed angels in charge of mankind to watch you. Kiraman, katibin, honorable, writing down your deeds. Kiraman, katibin, that the honorable, writing down your deeds, our deeds. Yeah. So they, they're always with us. Night and day, night and day, the, the, you know, the, these actions are being constantly recorded. And then on that day, we'll be given the book with everything recorded of what we did on the Day of Judgment. And these angels, you know, from, uh, from uh, when you are, uh, when the uh, pen is uh, placed uh, or not lifted from you, when you're adult, you know, and you carry out bad deeds up until the day you die. Uh, generally speaking, then that will be a book that has, re has all, all your de all our deeds recorded, everything we've done. So then the Sheikh says, "Qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam." The Prophet, uh, the Prophet said, <coughs> "Yata'akabuna fiikum malaika bi layli wa malaika bin nahar." The Prophet said that these um, uh, these angels. They are with us day and night, basically. These angels are with us day and night. Angels are with us day and night, recording our actions. There isn't a moment where there isn't an angel with us, recording our deeds. And then the Sheikh says, fi salatil fajri wa fi salatil asri wa yashhaduna lil musallina inda Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa lihada qala ta'ala wa Qur'an al-fajri inna Qur'an al-fajri kana mashhuda. أي يحضره الملائكة ملائكة الليل وملائكة النهار ومنهم من هو موكل بحفظ بني آدم من المكاره يحفظ له من الآفات ومن ومن الأعداء ومن الهوام من السباع سباع ومن الأفاعي والحيات ما دام له بقية حياة فإن له ملائكة يحفظون من يحفظونه so then the Sheikh, he says, he continues and he says also that there are like um, the angels gather uh, during, so this is the extra benefit, the, the angels, where the Sheikh mentions extra benefit here, the angels they gather during the Salatul Fajr in the Masjid, in the Masajid, in the mosques, during Salatul Fajr, the morning prayer, and during the uh, late afternoon prayer, Salatul Asr, the angels gather and they testify for those who are praying in the mosques at that time. They testify to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they inform Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they mention their names. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al Isra, let's go there. Surah, Surah Al Isra. Perform a salat, iqamat a salat from midday till the darkness of the night, i.e. the Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib and Isha prayers, and recite the Qur'an in the early dawn. So this is where we need to pay attention. And recite the Qur'an in the early dawn, i.e. the morning prayer. Verily, the recitation of the Qur'an in the early dawn is ever witnessed, attended by the angels in charge of mankind of the day and the night. So that confirms what the Shaykh has said. And then we continue and the Shaykh mentions here, so the angels, they, they attend. They are there in attendance during these times. 
And, the, and then the Sheikh says, and there are angels who have been charged with uh, the job of protecting Bani Adam, the, the children of Adam. So there are angels who are there to protect the children of Adam, insan, humankind, from those things that are hateful, those things that are dangerous, from whether that be some kind of infection or other harm, whether it's a predator or as such animals that can harm us, etc. Gives various, the Sheikh gives various examples. And so these angels, they are like guardians for us. You know, Allah sent them to be guardians, to be our guardians, to, to safeguard us. So then the Sheikh continues, he says, يَنَامُ بَيْنَ السَّبَاعِ وَبَيْنَ الْحَيَاتِ حَيَاتِ فِي الْبَرِّ مِنْ الَّذِي, يد... من الذي يَدْفَعُ عَنْهُ الْحَيَاتِ وَالس... وَالسَّبَّاعِ وَالْهَوَامِ مَا هُمْ مَلَائِكَ سَخَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى قَالَ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ لَهُ مُؤَقِّبَاتٌ مِّنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِ يَحْفَذُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ أي بأمر الله هؤلاء يحفظون بني آدم من المكار والأخطار إلى أن يحين العجل إلى أن يحين العجل فإذا حان الأجل تخلو عنه فوقي ما قدر الله له من الموت أو الإصابة التي تفضي إلى الموت. So then the Sheikh he says he gives the example following on from what he mentioned and he says, for example, just given as an example here. So somebody sleeping, you know, out in the land, open land, somebody's sleeping there, for example, on the land, could even be in the house. Um, and around him are these predators, these harmful creatures. Let's say, for example, a snake, like a cobra, for example. Who repels this cobra or this predator or this dangerous creature? The Sheikh says, with this person are angels that Allah has uh, sent to protect this person. Allah has tasked them and charge them with this task of protecting us. Yeah. And then the Sheikh, he gives an example. So, the Sheikh, he mentions here, he, uh, sorry, he quotes an ayah, the Sheikh, Hafizullah, he quotes an ayah from Surah Al-Ra'd, verse 11. So, shall we go there? Surah Al-Ra'd, verse 11. And if we will read the whole ayah. For each person, there are angels in succession before and behind him. They guard him by the command of Allah. Verily, Allah will not change the good condition of a people. Okay, we'll just stop there. So the first part of this ayah is what the Sheikh is uh, getting across to us. For each person, there are angels in succession before and behind him. They guard him by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What the Sheikh mentioned, this confirms what the Sheikh has said. So the Sheikh he says, i.e. That, that following on from this uh, verse, he says, i.e. by the command of Allah. That Allah has commanded these angels to protect humankind from those things that are hateful and dangerous as mentioned earlier but however when the time comes when the time comes and when the person reaches the end of their life whatever Allah's will for them then that takes over and the person um, uh, dies and then the uh, and and when that as uh, for example where the uh, where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, decreed for that person to die at that particular day that particular year that particular place and that takes over at that point <clears throat> and the angels are therefore no longer in the position to protect that person anymore yeah by allah's will of course then the shaykh continues and he says wa <clears throat> min وَمِنْهُمْ مَلَائِكَةُ مُوَكَّلُونَ بِتَنْفِيذِ الْأَوَامِرِ فِي أَقْتَارِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَا يَعْلَمُهُمْ إِلَّا اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَى مِنْهُمْ مَلَائِكَةُ أو مَلَائِكَةٌ يَطْلُبُونَ مَجَالِسَ الذِّكْرِ وَيَحْضُرُونَهَا كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم إلا نزلت عليهم السكينة وغشيتهم الرحمة وحفتهم 
الملائكة ملائكة سياح سياحون في الأرض يطلبون حلك الذكر ويشهدونها ويشهدونها So in this paragraph the Sheikh he says to us and from them are angels who have been charged with the tasks of executing the commands in in the heavens and in the earth only Allah knows subhanahu wa ta'ala only Allah knows about that and from them are also from them are angels that seek out the the sittings of um a remembrance remembering Allah a dhikr remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they seek out these places where Allah is being mentioned yeah wherever these places are and they attend those places attend to those places as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said he said in the hadith we just read majtama'a qawmun to the end of the hadith that that a people don't gather in a in a house from the houses of Allah reciting the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and studying it between themselves except that the angels descend upon the uh, except that uh, tranquility descends upon them and the and and um and basically uh, mercy covers them and the angels lower their wings upon them lower their wings on yeah lower their wings for them and uh, in a recent talk i don't know if any of you brothers went uh, hamdla me and uh, wasim we went to the um, the recent gathering uh, in birmingham the sheikh suleiman ruhaili came and i just want to share this benefit before we finish the lesson um about this hadith and he mentioned that the houses from the houses of allah it, this hadith doesn't restrict just to the mosques it could be anywhere so it could be us here now we are in this gathering of knowledge so this is the effect that we're getting we're in this gathering of knowledge the angels are here they are witnessing that you know we're remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we are learning the deen of allah and because of that tranquility descends upon us by the permission of allah and um mercy we are covered with mercy and the angels lower their wings so you know when it's noble and that's why it's important to attend the you know circles of knowledge wherever they are whether they're on the internet like this whether they are in a house whether they are in a masjid whether they are in a university you know wherever these uh uh lessons are taking place and you seek benefit then you should obviously according to the Quran and sunnah of course and we make sure that we remember this hadith as well you know and remind us of the great uh station and position that we can find ourselves in so anyway let's continue so the sheikh he says wala ya'lamu al-malaika wa asnafuhum wa awsafuhum illa Allah lakin ma ja'a fi an-nusus al-qur'aniyya wa al-hadith an-nubawiyya as-sahiha um athbatnahu wa taqadnahu wa ma lam yadhkur lana numsik anhum wa la نبحث فيه لأن هذا من علم الغيب الذي لا ندخل ندخل فيه أو ندخل فيه إلا بدليل. So the Sheikh says, just generally saying in this paragraph that, <coughs> that you know the way the angels are, you know how they may look, how they are, the shape, everything, these things only Allah truly knows this. However, whatever has come in the authenticated sunnah in the authentic sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and in the quran then we stop by that and if you remember uh, 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 in the previous lesson we talked about this where the shaykh said that what uh, what approach should a muslim take and the approach is when it comes to seeking knowledge and talking about the deen we stop where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stopped so we stop with the quran wherever the quran stops we stop with it wherever the authentic sunnah of the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam stop we stop there and these are the two things these are the two entities or um that we uh, are our sources of knowledge you know so we stop with the quran or we stop with the sunnah we don't start saying now oh i wonder if an angel has 
you know, they, you know, we don't start wandering off. This is the way of the people of Kalam or the people of philosophy who have been affected. And, you know, they start going in, they go out of bounds, basically. So we should stop with the Quran. What the Quran said, we stop there. And what the Sunnah says, we stop there. We don't go beyond this. Yeah. So then the Shaykh says, Fal Iman bil Malaika Rukum min Arkan al Islam. فَمَنْ جَحَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةَ وَقَالَ لَا يُوجِدْ مَلَائِكَةَ لِأَنَّنَا لَا نَرَاهُمْ هَذَا يَكُونْ كَافِرًا مُلْحِدًا زِنْدِيكًا وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ لِأَنَّهُ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِالْغَيْبِ وَكَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يُؤَوَّلَ الْمَلَائِكَةَ فَيَقُولَ الْمَلَائِكَةَ إِنَّمَا هِيَ مَعَانٍ وَلَيْسَتْ أَجْسَامًا وَهِيَ الْحَوَاجِسُ الَّتِي تَأْتِي عَلَى الْإِنْسَانِ إِنْ كَانَتْ حواجز خير فهي فهي ملائكة وإن كانت حواجز شر فهي شياطين فهذا قول الهادي والعياذ بالله والعياذ بالله ومع الأسف هو في تفسير المنار نقله محمد رشيد رضا عن شيخه محمد عبده وهذا كلام الفلاسفة وهو كلام باطل من اعتقادي فهو كافر لكن نرجو أنه نقله ولم يأتقده ولكن نقله من غير تعقيب فيه خطورة وهذا كلام باطل وكفر بالملائكة نسأل الله العافية والسلامة فالإنسان لا يدخل لا يدخل بأقله لا يدخل بأقله وتفكير أو أو ينقل عن الفلاسفة أو أو الزنادقة شيئا من امور الدين وامور الغيب وانما يعتمد على الكتاب والسنه هذا هو الواجب ويذكر في ويذكر في تفسير المنار انه منقول من كتاب احياء علوم الدين للغزالي والله اعلم. So we're going to finish on this uh, bit and then we will conclude because we're getting close to the time of Maghrib. So the Sheikh says in these three final paragraphs that we're going to finish on today he says that that um, believing in the angels is from the uh, pillar is from one of the pillars of Islam and from the pillars of Iman. So whoever rejects the angels, that rejects that they exist, then and that says, oh, for example, says that there, there are no angels be, uh, because we don't see them. What if somebody says, it says like there are no angels because we don't see them. So then this person is a disbeliever. Uh, and is uh, 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 has turned away from the deen of al-Islam and also is a disbeliever uh, and the one who turned away from Islam after uh, uh, believing in it and also is a heretic is heretical, this is heretical speech and then the Sheikh says well, that, you know, we seek refuge in Allah from that he goes because they don't believe in the unseen also likewise like I mentioned earlier the Sheikh mentions it here us as well in more detail. He says, likewise, the people who explain away the angels, for example, they say, well, the angels, it, mean, it has different meanings. It doesn't necessarily mean an angel in person. It's actually, it's not a, a being. It's not like an existing being. It is. It has meanings. It's something else. It has different bodies. They explain away things and they say, oh, no, it's just uh, um, what you feel and other things. And this is from philosophy. The Sheikh says, this is from the erroneous philosophy that the people employ, yeah, and it is speech that uh, takes you away from Islam. And Sheikh says, and and uh, with regret here that there's a book called Tafsirul Manar uh, by uh, somebody, an author called Muhammad Rashid Rida, uh, uh, and he uh, from his Sheikh Muhammad Abdu, and I think these are uh, people of the Kalam. So these are those uh, people who were affected by uh, for, uh, Aristotelian philosophy and they were Muslims, but they were affected by this philosophy. Instead of sticking to the Quran and Sunnah, they started relying on philosophy and they ended up getting confused in their deen. So then the Sheikh says, and he says, this is the speech of the philosophers. It's, ph it's philosophical. It's not from the deen of Islam and it is speech that is false. So the Sheikh says, whoever believes this, is a, is a disbeliever. And the Sheikh says, out of his goodness, he says, you know, we hope that the one who said these things in this book, as we mentioned the person's name, that he just conveyed them, but didn't actually believe in them. This is what the Sheikh is saying, that we wish that that's the case. Because whoever believes in it is a disbeliever then. And it's a dangerous affair. And obviously it's clearly false speech. 
and he says we ask Allah for uh, strength and security. Yeah, and then the final paragraph, the Sheikh says, he says, so you know, humankind, the person, it do, it um, uh, it says it doesn't enter his, it shouldn't enter his intelligence and his thought process, um, ex, um, uh, those things that the people of philosophy fell into, and the people of heresy fell into. Rather, it, when it comes to the affairs of the Deen, we should stick to the Quran and the Sunnah, the sources of the Deen. The Kitab and the Sunnah, i.e. the Quran and the Sunnah, and that is obligatory and an obligation upon us. And then the Sheikh says that it was mentioned in this book, in this uh, um, um, book, Tafsir al Manar, uh, which is uh, obviously got a lot of, uh, uh, as the Sheikh mentioned, a lot of this f- uh, philosophical uh, uh, beliefs in there. It is so, a book that was uh, based upon a book called Ihya Ulum al Din Lil Ghazali. And this uh, person, Al-Ghazali, was somebody who was affected by Sufiya and uh, philosophy. And some people say at the end of his life that he uh, returned to the truth. But I don't think there's anything that's written in terms of that. There's no book that he left behind. Allah Allah knows best. If anybody else knows, they can speak up, inshallah, and clarify that. But as far as I know, that is the case. So inshallah, what we'll do is we'll stop uh, here and we will continue from where we left off. Uh, inshallah next week barakallahu feekum subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh